Good morning, church. This song is called Trust in You. It talks about what do we do when God doesn't move those mountains that we ask Him to move. We trust in Him. Just join me in singing this. It's a very familiar song. Let's just declare what we feel about God. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary, I need your Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I'm leading you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't give me answers, as I cry out to you I will trust, I will to get for deep and sit amen hallelujah amen that's what faith is sometimes the waters don't part sometimes we just make to stand there and look but you know what he said be still be still and you'll see his glory that at times your prayers will not be answered but that doesn't mean that he's not answering your prayer it means that was not the right time that was not the solution it means that a better solution amen sometimes we're just standing there lord what next what next, God? What do I do, Lord? I don't know what to do. Lord, but you know what? As we sang this morning, I'll put my trust in you. I'll put my trust in you. And this morning, maybe you're standing before such waters, wondering, God, nothing is moving, Lord, my way. But you know what? This morning, God is telling us, trust me. You know, the promise of the month. He says, until your old age, until it becomes gray completely, he said, I will be with you. He said, I will carry you. What a promise. I will carry you until your old age. Even though you put black paint on your head again and again and again. Sometimes it becomes white. He says until it becomes white. 
So even you keep on putting dye again and again, when it gets white one day, God says, until then, I'll be with you. What an awesome God he is. What an amazing, loving, awesome God he is. Amen? Hallelujah. Ten months have passed by. Another 55 days and we will cross over into 2022. Remember 2021 when we were, 2020 when we were going through this pandemic? But I want to thank God that the worst is over. Today, Dubai has opened up, UAE has opened up, some of the other countries have opened up. You know why? Dubai, UAE has signed the Abrahamic Accord. Whether you like it or not, God says, those who bless Israel, I will bless. He says, anybody who blesses Israel, you see Genesis 12, uh, verses 1 onwards, it says, them that bless, I will bless. Whether you like it or I like it or not, this word is true because UAE has signed the accord, Abrahamic accord, to be friends with Israel. God is blessing this nation. Hallelujah. Don't forget to keep Israel in your prayer list. If you've never had it, I want to tell you because you know what? It doesn't matter what happens in India. It doesn't matter what happens in Punjab or in Pakistan. But what happens in Jerusalem and Israel will impact this world will impact world history. And I want to tell you, keep Israel in your map, in your prayer agenda every day because every day, you know, I pray for the president of Israel, for the prime minister of Israel, I pray because you know what? That is history. That's going to be history one day, what you're going to do. So please don't forget to pray for the nation of Israel. I want to thank God for our 12-point vision God gave us when we had this anniversary this year. And one of the points, one of the things that God put in, put in my heart as me and Pastor Helen were praying is, that we move to a bigger facility. And God is so faithful. He's so faithful. I want to thank God. December 17th, we are moving to a bigger facility by faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's probably two and a half times bigger than this. It's nothing what we have done. The church is his. The people are his. Every equipment here belongs to God. It's not WHC. It's not Satish. It's God's house. He's the owner. He's the boss. And he takes all the glory. All we need to do is stay humble. Amen. Stay holy and say, God, I give you all the glory. We want to thank God for the work that's going on there. Uh, we were able to give the contracts out for the PA system, for the stage. I want to thank everybody who's been helping, who's pu who putting their heart and soul uh, into it. And we've got a lovely name for the new facility. It's called Bait Al Baraka Events. It's called Bait Al Baraka Events, which is House of Blessing. Bait al-Baraka is called the house of blessing. And that's the name God put in, put in my heart. Amen. And we got that name. We got it approved. So that place is going to be called Bait al-Baraka Events LLC. I want to thank and praise God for the wonderful name that God has given. Amen. One life. Live for Jesus. Always keep telling people, when you get, when you get to heaven, it's not what car you drove. It's not how many promotions you got. He's not going to ask you, hey, were you a vice president or were you a president or were you a manager? He's not going to ask you that. When you stand before God the Father on a beautiful day, he's going to ask you your account. I give you a promotion. Did you tithe in the church? I give you a car. Did you pick up people and go to church? I give you all these things. What have you done for me? Let's not go back out of this house doing the same things again and again. Let's do something different. Say, Lord, do something new with me, God. I'm not going to go back same again. Do the same old things. Why should God keep you alive and take six million people out of this world? Why are you and I alive this morning? Because God has got a purpose for you and I. That we would serve him. That we would give him our best. That we give our heart, soul, mind, our spirits, our gifting, our talents. And put it for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And that's why we're here this morning. I want to thank and praise God today. Pastor Helen left for Canada. Um, so I'm a bachelor guy for the next three weeks. Thank God she's having her good time with, her, with, 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 our, with, our, with our girls in, in Canada. And I'm going to have my time with my Lord here. Focus on the church, uh, church that's, that's, that's being uh, refurbished. Amen. You know, so when you go to the supermarkets... You know, generally, forget the ladies, yeah, I'm not going to talk to the ladies alone. We also. You have these coupons, right? You fill this thing and you put it there. And every time uh, Pastor Helen puts it there, Lord, one time at least, Lord, let me get this prize, Lord. All of us fill up the coupons, right? Car coupon, you put this 200,000, you get gold. 
all of us do that i know people like bevin stan you know they hear the radio they've got iphones uh, they've got some trips to some hotels and all that you know so all of us do that sometimes you know what we all want we all want to be recognized we all want to win right is there anybody here who says no i want to lose anybody here i want to lose lose we say no we say we look at some guys a loser this guy is we all want to win we all want to be recognized right right from uh right from you know you take one vessel you get one free boss go they'll buy that because you get one free yeah you fill a coupon god last week i remember we filled a coupon somewhere saying helen babe why can't we get a car babe put it in put in pray and put in faith baby maybe god will give it some day you never know yeah he's looking at valen saying fill up all the coupons put it if you've not put it inside you may you may get something yeah so all of us want to win and be recognized in life correct everybody there's nobody here in corporate we're fighting there we are fighting there because the boss we want to make sure the boss recognizes us we want to be better than the next person we want to be better than the person behind we want to be best, better than the person in front corporate life race is going on in family every day there is a running that's happening every day we're running a race be be it in corporate be it in church be it in family every day is a race champions and winners are not made overnight correct you can't become a champion overnight you can't become a winner overnight deepika didn't sing like this overnight it takes years of practice it takes a lot of time to play the guitar keep singing yes god has given you gifting but if you don't develop that gift and if you don't keep deploying the gift in the kingdom of god it's going to get rusted I want to thank God for all the talents in the house of God. It belongs to Jesus. It's not yours. If God has given you a gift, it's not yours. It's that somebody will be blessed with the talent, with the gift that you've got. Amen. All of us champions. I was reading. I was reading about Rafael Nadal. Two hundred and nine weeks, he was number one. It's very difficult to stay for that long in a number one slot. Two hundred and nine weeks, he was in the number one spot. Look at his workout regime. 6 to 130 is his first workout so he he is at 6 he does whole lot of gym till about 1 130 to 4 o'clock he does a lot of charity work a lot of children he does a lot of charity work he goes and looks at his files says and then 430 to 7 his second workout starts in the day this is a regular routine 430 to 7 his second workout 7 o'clock he spends time with family and friends this is a daily routine if you want to be on that podium if you want to be a winner if you want to stay 209 weeks at the number one spot there is something you got to do you got to do something beyond the ordinary to be a winner in life you can't just sit quietly 209 weeks to be number one spot is no jokes and this is not a one time thing he does it every day rafael nadal and you see him play 13 times he's won the french open it's no joke to go sit there with that stamina if there's no if there's no routine and rhythm in your life you can't get to be a winner you can't get to be a winner and this morning i want to talk on the subject on the title can you get the title please are you a are you winner material because you know what covid covid is just a precursor what you're going to see what's going to come I'm telling you take more words tomorrow there's going to be a time when you can't download the bible app you version is not going to be here there's somebody else going to control this world you're not going to be able to download a you version or your daily plans that you do or even your two minute plan that you read today verse of the day the lord is my shepherd i shall not want thank you lord for this verse you're not even going to have that in this app called the in this in this mobile that's going to be the perilous times that the times are going to come But you know what? If you and I have to stand those perilous times, just imagine something worse than COVID comes. It's going to come. This is just a precursor. God is preparing us, and as a church, we want to make sure we prepare you and I. We are prepared for worse times to stand. And if you're not made of a winner material, then when calamity comes, when the hurricane Katrina, when hurricane all these come, we will sink. We will sink. and today the last day call is to prepare the church prepare the bride because he's coming soon we want to make sure that everybody here and your family is found in heaven there is there when we go there in heaven that everybody is found and today 
we want to make sure that each one of you are prepared. And if you are not of that winner material, tomorrow when things worse than COVID comes, depressed. You see the world, a lot of people depressed. Today, the most thriving business is healthcare, uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, because everybody depressed. I don't know what to do. Divorce. For the smallest reason, they're throwing vessels in the house because they're seeing their wife, seeing their husband 24 hours of the day. They're throwing vessels in the house and then they land up in the coach there. But I want to thank God you're all seated here with your spouses. Praise God. We've not reached that state still here. All of you are still sitting with your spouses. Praise God for that. You know, so, 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 so it takes a lot to be a winner. It's not easy. It's hard work. So, so you, need, you and I need to check our lives and see what does it take to be a winner in our lives. Let's open a scripture to 1 Corinthians 9, 24. You know, the Bible also says, you know, in Matthew 20, 24, 24, it says, in the last days, the very elect will be deceived, which means in the last days, people like Pastor Alex and me, and you are sitting here, could be deceived by the enemy if you're not careful. In the last days, the devil comes with so many deceptive teachings, comes with so many deceptive things that even you and I who are sitting here could be deceived. If we are not alert, if we are not careful, if you are not made of the winner material inside, you could be deceived. You could be carried off. Today we have a whole lot of teachings into the church. So many things have come into the church and people believe all kinds of things. If you are not careful, you could be deceived. And the Lord says, I want to tell you, Lucifer and his band, they are very powerful guys. But if we not of that winner material, He'll eat you up like that for breakfast. Forget lunch and dinner. You won't last even the breakfast. He'll just swallow you up for breakfast if we are not made of the winner material, if you don't know who you are in Christ. And this morning I want to talk on the subject, are you winner material from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, 25. It says, don't you realize that, every, that in a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. Just keep this. It says, everybody, all of you are running. We're running a race. Home, we're running a race. Family, we're running a race. This morning, I was running a race. We got up at 4.30, packed the bags, got past Helen ready, put her at the airport, running, 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 came back, got ready, went and picked up my nephew and niece from the hotel, brought them here. We're running. We're running a race. Every day, corporate, running a race. You ask people who are in sales, Pastor, I want to meet my target. I'm not able to meet my target, Pastor. I want to meet my target. Not only meet, I want to exceed my target. I want to make sure I get those numbers. You ask the school teachers, it's a mad race for them. Gone are the days when they could relax after 7 in the evening. Today till 11, they're busy on their laptop. Parents talk to teachers at 9 in the night, sending them WhatsApp messages. It's no more, it's no more uh, a, a likable job. You ask all the teachers, they'll tell you, it's no more a likable job to teach. It's a rat race. It's a rat race. We're all running a race. And he says, in a race, everybody's running. All of you seated here are running a race. But he, he says, only one can win. Only one will win. And he says, Paul says, run in such a way to win. Run in such a way to win. Run in such a way. What way? And he says, when you run, I want you to win. The Bible says he wants none of us to perish. That's God's wish. He wants all of us to be in heaven. But there's a way to do it. We can't do it our way. There are some rules and regulations. There are promises in the word of God. When we follow them, God says, you and I can be a winner. Let COVID-19 come. COVID-23 come, toward COVID-27 come. It doesn't matter what comes. Corona. I remember we used to have a shoe shop called Corona back in Senate. Somebody that day was saying, uh, yeah, Corona, Corona. I was reminded of the shoe. I was thinking, man, the devil's under my feet. He's under my feet. The more we get scared of Corona and COVID, he's going to take advantage of you. The more you tell him, he's under my feet. I'm no longer a slave to fear. We sang this morning. 
It's a song of declaration. It's not a song of worship. It's a song of declaration. Look at devil and tell him, I'm no longer a slave to fear. You devil, I want you to know, I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How long are we going to get scared of COVID, COVID, COVID? Amen. Take your authority as a child of God. Take your authority as a child of God. Yes, you have to be careful, no doubt. You wear your mask when you go out. Yes, you wash your fingers. You keep yourself neat. But don't stay away from fellowship. Because you know what? That again is the trick of the devil. The devil wants to isolate you from fellowship. Keep you in your room. Make you fight with your wife. Put a divorce notice. Get you depressed. That is the devil's trick. Isolation is a tool of the enemy. But you know what? We think, hey, COVID, we have to be isolated from everybody. Don't talk to anybody. Don't touch anybody. You touch the lift, you'll get, uh, you'll get COVID. People are putting gloves now. And even to press that nine, I saw that there's somebody with the gloves like this. And one guy, he did like this, uh, press the button like this. I think, wow. I was just laughing standing there in the lift. You know, I mean, we're so scared of life. And I want to tell you this morning, God wants to make you and I a winner. And he says, I want you to be winners in every contest of life, even if worse things come. How can you stand? You know, I'm reminded of as, as kids, when you go to the beach, we all been to the beach, right? And we like to go a little closer. We'll go a little closer, pull people little by little. While well, the mothers will be pulling us back with children, we want to go in front. Little more, little more, little more, little more. And the waves will come. And when those big waves come, the best way to hold the waves is you keep your feet firm on the sand. And when it comes, you go with the wave like that and come back on the sand. So sometimes you've got to keep your firm feet firm there to hold on when the waves come. Otherwise the waves will wash you away. You need a firm foundation to catch those waves. When the waves of life hit you, when depression hits you, when the enemy oppresses you, when COVID-27 or 35 comes, whatever comes, when it comes your way, how do you stand against that and still say, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Run in such a way to win. Today's world is full of sin, greed. If you look at the book of Corinthians, the context of Corinthians, it says, that's what the church Paul is really worried about. It is full of, moral values were so low. Sin, greed, seeped in immorality. That was the Corinthian church. And there Paul is saying, hey, I want you to be winners. I want you to be winners. I don't want you to be, don't want you to be losers. Paul was encouraging them. I want you to win this race that you're running. Don't lose out. Don't fall back. Keep pushing. Keep pushing forward. And you know, you can win. Run in such a way to win. I want to talk of three C's today. Number one. Amen. Can we get those? Is there a slide, the three C's there? Okay. The first one is the competition. We're all in a competition, correct? Every day is a comp competition we're running on. School, college, home, we're running a competition. The second C is the way. Run in such a way. A consecration, a commitment. The third C is the commemoration. Yeah, you can close the slide. Three C's, easy to forget, easy to remember. CCC. So what did, what did you learn first week of November? CCC. Very easy, right? So what's the first C? Second C. Consecration, a commitment. Third C. Commemoration. Very simple. We are all running a race. Paul is running a race. David is running a race. Battles every day. Every other day he was fighting a battle. Moses, every day he was fighting a battle. The people of Israel were mourning, cribbing, whining against Moses. Every day was a battle for him. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.12, it says, Fight the good fight of faith. So Paul says, every day is a fight of faith. We're fighting. We're fighting to stand. We're fighting to stand firm. We're fighting to stay afloat. We're fighting to survive. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life which God has called you, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. Today we declared, I'm no longer a slave to fear. We declared before everybody, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. We declared it this morning. Next time when you're afraid, Declare it. Look at the devil and say, you devil, I want you to know I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. When disease comes near you, say, I'm no longer a slave to fear, you devil. I'm a child of God. Speak to him. Don't keep quiet. 
instead of talking to somebody and saying hey you know what you know what? i mean instead of cribbing and whining look at the devil square on his face and tell him i'm no longer a slave to fear i'm a child of god i will overcome this even this storm will pass even this storm will pass hallelujah you know uh, sunny and tina have admitted their son almost for four days he was in the hospital and early in this morning about four o'clock i was riding to tina how's the boy doing beautiful this is what she wrote to me she said thanking god for all that he's done for us uncle for being there with us through the storms and seeing us through it so grateful that he has lifted every valley and lowered every mountain for our family we are nothing without him i know tina what she was when she came in to this church and for her to write this statement thanking god for all that he's done uncle for being there with us through the storms and seeing us through it so grateful that he has lifted every valley and lowered every mountain for our family we are nothing without him i was just praising god for sunny and tina probably 3 days in the hospital with a little son crying some fluid in the ear fever all the things you know i'm just wondering god i'm singing for you god Sunny must be thinking god i play the guitar for you every week god he's not here today because only last night they came came back home he must think god why but for them to write this testimony saying god you've lowered every mountain lord hallelujah without you we are nothing god without you we are nothing god hallelujah i want to thank god for the testimony i want to thank god it is well with easy in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah i want to thank and praise god we're all running a competition every day every day every day we're running we're running a race we want to win but paul says run in such a way to win mindset is very important mindset is very important run in such a way what is that way to win if you start looking at life every day that you want to win i'm telling you you will speak different your language will be different Every morning as me and Helen pray we hold hands and we pray I say God today I'm a winner God today I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me I claim the promise of the year Lord that you level every mountain as we walk out of the house God you're going to give us the treasures even today you're going to give us the treasures Lord hallelujah when you begin to speak the word of God I want to tell you it will confuse the enemy he's not going to come near you the more you say I'm scared this will happen I don't know if this will happen yeah you know look at him on square on the face please from today onwards look at him square on the face and tell him i'm no longer a slave to fear i am a winner i'm a winner material inside he's made me in his image he didn't make me to fall and, and fall and defeat he made me to rise up again hallelujah hallelujah amen covid came just imagine all of a sudden one fine day shops were closed they said don't come to school nobody even the government didn't know how to tackle this covid it was completely to everybody this was kind of new everybody was giving one one message everybody was saying put the gloves put the one guy says don't put the gloves one guy says put vaccine even though people say they want to they want to take vaccine one guy saying is the 666 mark if i take this vaccine all kinds of stories around but you know what i know whom i believed i know who i believed the lord has said even unto my gray hair he would be with me he said i will carry you he never said he never said i'll come along with you he knows you and i can't walk sometimes sometimes you and i human he can't we can't walk he says i will carry you and i will keep you safe wow i'm thinking god i'm human at times god i fail sometimes but god says you know what those times i will carry you satish i will carry you that's the love of god He knows we are all human times no matter how much i preach i can preach here all day but one fine day that little humanness will come and i may probably slip a bit he says i'll carry you satish don't worry i'll carry you he'll carry you he'll carry you no matter what he'll carry you until your old age he said he'll carry carry you amen number 2 run in such a way such a way what is that such a way what is that way what is that way what is that way look at the battle david had to fight david fought many battles one of the biggest fat battles he bought fought was when he was in the balcony and looked at bathsheba everybody was fighting a war this man was in the balcony leching at another woman having her bath kalas that's it kalas over 
game over battle battle of the mind battle we all face battles every day david for another battle his own son absalom was coming after him to kill him he was running away from his son can you imagine running away from a son who wants to kill you elijah human as he is he killed 400 prophets of baal and the next minute he's running away from jezebel because jezebel said i'm going to kill you tomorrow but this time you'll be dead as human as elijah was he says god i don't want this life god take me away god it was a battle they fought samson fought the battle god had ordained him god had had given him all the strength but he just sold it off to another woman he kept going he kept going he kept going away from god until one fine day death hit him battle moses and pharaoh battle every day moses must have thought god when are you going to get these guys out god every day go tell pharaoh pharaoh today frogs are going to come today hail is going to come today this is going to happen it kept happening again and again and again i'm sure moses thought god when is this going to end god every day is a battle probably you're going through those battles you know of god when is this going to end lord when is this going to end when is this going to end lord hallelujah everybody had to fight the battle verse 25 can you take 1 corinthians 9 25 27 please so all athletes are disciplined in their training they do to win a prize that will fade away but we do it amen for an eternal prize all athletes all runners are disciplined there is a discipline to follow if you want to be a winner correct if you want to win a prize i just told you about rafael nadal 209 weeks he was at number one spot he can do that you saw his regime you saw his his uh, his uh, his his daily routine that is not something that happens on the weekend it's not like friday church i come to friday church but saturday to thursday i'll do what i walk i do what i want i'll go where i want i go to any cinema i can drink what i want i can do any cinema but friday morning lord forgive me lord friday a christian saturday to thursday christian i ain't that's not the regime of rafael nadal every day every day every day he had to do that <coughs> usain bolt how many of you know who usain bolt is anybody guess what was his timing 100 meters world record ah uh, 9 point 9.6 9.62 was the world record usain bolt amen but you know what for that for that 9 seconds for the 9 second race do you know how much he had to work out for that 1 minute for the 9 seconds of that run he probably worked years together training himself to go stand on the podium before the entire world and be crowned the fastest man in the world i'll tell you look at his regime his workout routine I'm just going to take one minute on this. Yeah, is it there? Oh yeah. Not this, not this, not this. Please, please move, move, move. Send another send. Did I get the Usain Bolt's uh Ah, okay. Please read this. Leg races, all these are three sets, yeah? Side sweeps. Uh Arun, come here. Come here. <laughs> Arun is a gym instructor. He used to work with uh, Jay Vardhan and Sri Lanka and some of the other cricketers. uh training them he's now a gym instructor as well so arun you <laughs> leg races side sweeps reverse crunches side plank clams bunny hops box jumps bounding cable knee drivers hanging legs his weight training box jumping good morning barbell lunge slide plush barbell landmine power clean explosive barbell romanian deadlift sledge drag barbell abs roll out his speed training starting block his acceleration top end speed has de- de- deacceleration all to win it's not a one day regime you, any of these exercises you can show yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a lot that's a lot it's um, really a very lot that's really a lot for 9.62 seconds and to be a winner he has to do all this every day not only that 
He has a diet. He knows what his breakfast is, his lunch is, his dinner is. Thank you, Aaron. Amen. All for what? For the 9.62 seconds, all athletes go through some training to win. And I want to tell you this morning, if you want to be a winner material in the kingdom of God, when COVID-25 comes, when COVID something comes in 35 or whatever comes, if you want to stand the storm of your life, when the news of death comes in your year, if you want to stand it, amen. When you lose your job and when you stand it, if you want to be the winner material, there is a discipline. Only then you'll be able to stand. Others, we will dwindle down. We will sink. Discipline. Discipline. What discipline? You know, not that two-minute prayer in the morning. God, bless mommy, bless daddy, God. Bless my husband, bless my children, Lord. Bless the day for me in Jesus' name. Amen. And we think we've said a great prayer. Come back in the night. Good night, Lord. Thank you, God. Ta -da -ta. Back to WhatsApp. Go back to our PS4. Back to our games. Back to social media. It's a selfie generation. Always tell people, right? Selfie. Anywhere you go, like you go to the airport, first step, one selfie. Then when he's putting the ticket there, he's taking one selfie. You can see the guys there. Then when he's going to the immigration, from there he's taking a selfie, one guy. Every step, one selfie, selfie, selfie. For what? Instagram. One post like this, then one like this, then one like this. You know, same breast, one four posts, round and round they go. We are in a selfish generation. It's about I, me, myself. It's about I, me, myself in a generation like that. And today God says, I want to make you a winner material. But to be a winner material, you need to be disciplined. Without discipline, it never happens. I still remember when my daughter Joni got married way back in, sorry, okay, she got married, okay, three years back, three, I forget the year, so when she got married, she gave me a challenge, she said, dad, I want you, 20, 2017 January, she said, dad, I want you to reduce dad, uh, because you know what she said, she said, dad, when you walk down the aisle, the place won't be enough if you and I have to walk. Because I wanted Helen also to walk with me. I said, no, mommy and daddy walk. She said, dad, impossible, forget it. You know, so I said, okay, I'll reduce. So I went on a regime. So I had, I had uh, uh, Arun's boss, Ansar, who used to come and train me at home. I went through a diet. I reduced nine and a half kilos. But that was disciplined. It took discipline for me to get down nine and a half kilos. And then when I wore the new suit and all that, you know, today I still have that. I'm hoping one day for Jenny's wedding, I'll be able to get in the same suit. Yeah, so I'm going through a diet now because it's a, it's a discipline. Nothing happens without a discipline. It's the same in Christian rock because that's what Paul is encouraging. He says, every athlete goes through some discipline. And I want to tell you here watching me out there, without discipline, you're not going to make it. COVID-19 was a precursor for what more is going to come. Perilous times are coming. Worst times are coming. Lucifer and his bandwagon are already loosened out there. They're coming. They're coming. They're trying to gain territory. But if you and I want to stand against him and stand firm and stand still, God says, without discipline, it's going to be tough. Without discipline, it's going to be tough. Your two-minute noodle prayer is not going to wait. It's not going to move the enemy. He's going to stand there tight. He's going to stand there Come on, man. Try me. In the name of Jesus. Forget it, buddy. You sit for four hours on your PS4 and you come two minutes and say, in the name of Jesus, he'll give you one kick and you'll fly. We're all that sometimes, right? This morning, God, the Holy Spirit is telling, wake up. Wake up. Wake up, people. There's so much of uncertainty happening around, but there's hope for the child of God. The Bible says in Psalm 1, he says, he says blessed is the man. He said, even if it's not in season, you and I will bloom. You know why? Because we are the children of God. You and I will bloom. It doesn't matter. Even today, when there's COVID, people are buying cars. People are being promoted. We're moving to a new place in a COVID season. You know why? Because God is in control. We are moving in faith. We are listening to the voice of God and moving in faith to a bigger place. Because God has spoken to us. And God is providing every dream there so that that place can be blessed and people can be blessed. And I want to tell you this morning, if you are not disciplined in your Christian walk, when more worse things come, you're going to dwindle down. You're not going to be able to stand. 
There'll be a time when you can't when you can't call your pastor for prayer. I'm going to tell you it's going to happen. When all your Christian apps you it'll not be here. But you know what? But if you keep it here, if you keep it here, you'll be able to stand. I don't know if you know Richard Wombran. He was in the communist prison, the Romanian prison for 14 long years. I was listening to his testimony. He says solitary confinement 14 years for spreading the gospel and speaking to people about Christ 14 long years he said the only thing that kept me going that kept me sane is the word of god that i learned when i was young he says the word of god kept me going and that's why we invest so much in our children teach them and that's why today we're saying guys spend time in the word of god spend time in prayer spend time in worship you know worship something the devil hates It's okay if you can't sing. Play the YouTube even this morning. I just got to play the YouTube that will keep going on because you know what when the songs come in the atmosphere changes in your house. The atmosphere changes in your room. When worship arises it confuses the enemy. He does not like it. He starts getting irritated. That's what happens. He can't stand Lucifer was a worshipper and when true worship comes it irritates him. It irritates him. You can't sing it doesn't matter. First thing in the morning I would encourage you to so on your TV play the YouTube just play some worship songs. Let it keeps going on. Let it keep going on. Let it keep going on. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to close in a few minutes. You saw the training was in Bolt. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I was asking my my son-in-law Ajit, he did a half he did a half iron man. He did two iron mans one behind the other. So that's 2 kilometers of swimming, 90 kilometers of bike ride and 22 kilometers of running. He says, "Dad, it took me 7 months of training, 4000 kilometers into and of doing all this training every day. 241 hours he invested and plus diet to complete just to complete not to win, to complete that marathon. 4000 kilometers, 7 months, 241 hours to complete the the triathlon which he did." I'm just thinking man I mean Paul was not crazy to write all of us have to run a race you're all running a race I'm telling you teachers students corporate people pastors pastor Alex is running a race I'm running a race I have the same temptation what you have when you walk out of this place I'm not I'm not I'm not sealed in any way but you know what it's God's grace I ask for his grace every day same temptations what you go through i go through but you know what the difference is if you're disciplined you would know what to do when it hits you when you're disciplined you'll have enough of ammunition to throw at the devil you'll be able to tell him i'm no longer a slave to fear man i'm a child of god otherwise you know what pastor please pastor pray pastor i don't know what to do pastor i don't know pastor i don't know what to do pastor i don't know what to do boss talk to another woman you know what i mean we crib we wine but this morning god says i want to make you a winner material run in such a way in such a way how often do we read the bible how often do we read the bible how much of time do we take to read the bible calendar every day we repeat the promise of the year gone finished over worship team that's why i tell you every thursday Don't have late nights on Thursday. Why do I tell you that? I want you to be in the presence of God because when you come here and sit, stand. This is the ministry that you're doing here. You're not coming to sing. This is a ministry, so you better be soaked in the presence of God because there are hundred people who are going to come and listen to you. You got to lift their spirits up. <laughs> Lastly. the commemoration when you have a disciplined life whom do we hang out with part of discipline whom do we hang out with every day who are your friends they tell you no you tell me who your friend is and tell who you are whom do we hang out with very very important every day my prayer for my children is god help them to choose godly good friends god give them good friends jesus pray the prayer for your children please parents pray the prayer for your children you pray that prayer god give me godly friends in my life god who will spur my faith who will inspire me god because the bible says in someone blessed is the man 
who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and whatsoever he does will prosper, whatsoever, everything he does will prosper when you stay away and fellowship with children of God. Joel's father calls me often. Suddenly he calls me, where is Joel? So I, I tell his father, look, he's not flirting with anybody. He's not running after some woman. He's with our church people practicing, boss. What's your problem? So I tell him, don't call me till it's 11.30 in the night. If the sun is not there, then you give me a call. Ah, he'll say, yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Whom do you hang out with? Very, very important. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are all in a competition. Hallelujah. Are you, are you made of the winner material? Daniel 6, Daniel 6, 24. You know, when Daniel heard the news that he was going to put the den of, in, into the den of lions, what did Daniel do? Read that. No, no, da sorry. Daniel, Daniel 6, verse 10. Just see verse 10. It says, Daniel went to his room, opened the windows as usual, turning towards Jerusalem. Amen. Yeah. He went home and knelt down as usual. His routine. He had a routine in life. He had a rhythm in life as usual. Opened the windows and he prayed three times a day just he had always done. Giving thanks to God. When did you do this? Hey buddy, tomorrow you're going to be in the den of lions. Boss, stand firm. Be still and know that he is God. Dude, you must tell him, this guy must be a... I mean, dude, what the hell are you doing, man? I mean, tomorrow you're going to be the den of lions. You just want to go and pray, open your windows as usual and pray. You know why? He had a routine that was rock solid. Nothing could move that. And go back to Daniel chapter t uh, 6 verse 25. Look what happened when you're rock solid. It says, then the king gave the orders to... So you know the story. The king ordered everybody who had thrown him in the lion den. He ordered them all killed. And then what did he do? Verse 25, then King Darius sent this message to, the, to every people. He says, the God of Daniel is God. Wow. When you stand firm, not only are you saved, but the entire world gets to see who the God you worship is. And what happened after that? Bible says, Daniel was promoted in the kingdom. What happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They defied the king. That king, sorry, we will not bow down, buddy. Sorry, he defied the king. Just imagine, he defied the ruler of this nation. Sorry. Here you do something, then they'll deport you. There he defied the king and they said they'll throw you into the fire. But you know what? They were rock solid. Even there, the king proclaimed that God, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego is God and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were promoted. What did Job do? He lost everything. The Bible says in Job verse 20, it says, and Job worshipped God. He lost everything. Job 1.20 says, he worshipped God. Wow. I mean, just imagine he lost everything and he worships God. I mean, what kind of guy this guy must be? I mean, what kind of discipline? The Bible says before that, every day he used to offer sacrifices. He was a just man. He was a just man. This morning, God is asking what are you made of? I want to tell you, it's your choice. Satish is here not to force you. We're not going to force you. But it's a choice you have to make to get discipline in your life. Can you get the last slide, please? Mm. A quick checklist. Winner material checklist. Routine time of prayer and reading the word. Who are your close friends? Whom do you hang out with? Are you a regular church goer? Smallest headache, we don't come to church. But you could be having a diarrhea, loose motion, but you get to office. Because you know what? One day salary will go. But two hours in God's presence is very difficult. Yeah? True worshiper. Guys, if you can't sing, it's okay. Play the YouTube, listen to worship music. Because you know what? Worship makes the demons tremble. It irritates them. Treat your spouse and others with respect. Win a material. It's not enough just to come here and sing worship. This is 
Friday is, is not a measure of how you are. When you walk out of this place, is a measure of what you are. How do you treat your driver? How do you treat your maid? How do you treat your spouse? Is a measure of whether, you have, whether your material is strong inside. Be a testimony in the office. Will people talk good about you in the office? If I were to go and ask somebody, if I were to ask about Jonathan, when I ask his friend, hey, how is Jonathan? How is it to work under Sean? How is it to work under Satish in the office? Will people say, it sucks? Or they'll say, wow, great guy, man. That's the testimony. That's winner material. Helping the poor and others in need. I mean myself, move a little, move a little further. That is Christianity. That is winner material. Helping others in need. Obey authority. Your parents, your boss, your pastor. That is winner material inside. That humility to, 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 to subject yourself to leadership is a principle in the Bible. A lot of people are not blessed. You know why? They disobey authority. Stay calm. Be patient. Be faith-packed. Are you dependable? Are you somebody who keep up, keep up, keep, keeps your word up? Family altar. How many of you pray in the night with your family? Winner material. All this will go to make you strong on the inside. Love the things of God. When storms and hurricanes your boss, your spouse, bad news, sad news comes. Nothing will shake you. I'm just going to keep this slide for a minute. I want you to look at this slide. Put yourself in this. Who are my friends? Do I read the Bible regularly or is it just because my wife tells me to read it, I read it. 15 months, I lost the job. I, I didn't have a job for 15 months. But you know what? Every Saturday... I would go to the Tamil AG church and lead worship with my guitar. I'll be jumping the way I jumped today. Not one day did I stop. Not one Friday. You'd never know. Because you know what? It's rock solid. Today I know. No matter what happens, I know who I am in Christ. I know until this hair becomes white, he said, you beat me. And he said, Satish, even if you slip by mistake at times, I will carry you. I will carry you until the end. I mean, what an awesome God he is. It's not going to come easy, I'm going to tell you. Perilous times are coming. Because that's the word of God. It's not what Satish is saying. Go read Matthew 24. It'll tell you what's coming up. The times that are coming are terrible. Joel, can you get on the keys, please? Worship team, can you come on top? The times that are going to come are going to be so terrible. But if you want to stand, if you want to stand, you've got to have the winner material inside. I want you to check your life. Can you make some decisions today, please? Social media, give it a rest. Give it rest. Nothing will happen. Your girlfriend will not leave you. She'll stay. Don't worry. She'll wait for you till you switch it on and she'll say hi to you. Your boss will not going to shout at you. Because you know what? He's the one who put, put your boss there in that place. Try it. Give God priority in your life. Discipline yourself a little more. I was not perfect. I also grew. Somebody told me, Satesh, be a little more disciplined. So, I'm, so I've got into a routine in my spiritual walk. We're having these prayer walks in the new place. Can you get the slide up there, please, Shannon, the prayer walk? I wanted, in, I wanted to announce this before we close in prayer. Okay, this is the prayer walk. So the coming Sunday, we're not going to have the prayer uh, on Zoom. We're all going to assemble in the new place. We're going to pray at 8 o'clock there. 8 o'clock in the new place. We're going to soak that place. We're going to soak that street. We're going to bind the powers of darkness in that area and subdue it under us in the name of Jesus because you and I have that authority. When we go there, we are walking there from a place of victory. We're walking there as conquerors into the new place. And I'm praying, God, fill that place with your glory, God. 8 o'clock on Sunday. We're going to meet there on 7th or on 21st. And Wednesday and Mondays, morning or evenings, just walk that street. Just keep praying. We're going to have prayer walk in that new place. Would you stand up where you are this morning? Hallelujah. Are you a championship material?
perfect training get yourself some discipline run in such a way to win god wants you to win god wants you to be a winner in every contest of life but it calls for some discipline because the times are going to get even more worse that's going to come but if you need to stand god says man you need something more inside of you you need something more inside of you this is my desire to honor you lord i worship you all that i have within me I give you praise all that I adore is in you Oh Lord I give you Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul Amen just tell him Lord I'm giving it all to you Amen Jesus Every breath that I take Every moment I'm away Lord have your way in me I don't know what your decision is but it's a choice that you make You don't have to make it for the pastor you don't have to make it for your parents you don't have to make it for anybody You have just have to make it for yourself All the, all the eyes are closed and heads are bowed this morning. I want all of us to close our eyes this morning. Heads are bowed this morning. And you want to look at the Lord and say, God, this morning, Lord, I want to take a step forward, Jesus. I want to make more time for you, God. I'm going to keep my social media off for some time, God. I'm going to keep you as priority, God. I'm going to keep my PS4 aside, Lord. I'm going to use some of the time God for you Jesus. God, I'm going to listen to that worship music and play it in the house God. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm going to cut off some friendships that are not made for me God. I'm going to hang out with saints of God, with children of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to treat my spouse with respect God. If you've never helped the poor, I want to tell you this morning, do something for them. do something for them Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm awake Lord have your way this is my desire I tell him Lord I want to honor you God. Let that be your prayer this morning. With all that I have I want to honor you Lord. You Yes God. Amen Jesus. I want to give it all to you God. You alone every breath that I take every moment I'm away. Lord have your way in me. Lord have your way in me. Lord have your way in me
If you want to make the decision, you can raise your hands to Jesus and say, God, I'm going to take one step forward, God. Things I've never done before, I want to do that, God. I want to make you first in my life, God. No more the old life. I want to be a winner, God. I want to be a winner, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank and praise you for this lovely time, God. Thank you for your sweet and awesome presence, God. I thank you for everybody who's made the decision here to leave some of the things, God, and put on new things, God. Thank you for the desire to honor you, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you said, them that honor me, I will honor, said the Lord. God will honor you, not the pastor. God will set you on high. He will honor you when you honor him. When you give him that priority, God says, I will set you on high. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your children this morning. Let them go with your peace, God. Thank you, God. Thank you that you're setting them free from the shackles, Lord, from the chains that you're bounding, Lord. Chains of social media, chains of gaming, Lord, chains of sin. Lord, you're breaking it in Jesus' name. Chains of sickness is being broken in Jesus' name because you are making Jesus your priority. And he's going to make you a winner in every contest in life. He will keep you on high. You will come back and tell me, I gave Jesus priority, pastor, and Jesus has kept me on high. He will set you on high. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be so gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen and amen.